So pretty soon you're gonna get your own instrument, whether you're at home, or you're at school, no matter where you're learning, you're gonna have your own instrument. And pretty soon you're gonna be able to actually read music on your own and play whatever you want because you can read music. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about music notation and how we read music. Before we get into the specifics of what it looks like, we're gonna talk about the history of it so we understand why we read it this way and how it came to be how it is. So take a listen to this piece of music for me. This is the best song ever. Yeah, Miss Lou's rocking out over there behind the camera. You can't see her, but she is. This is the greatest piece of music. Take a listen to it and rock out. Where have you heard this before? <laughs> You would probably hear something like that in a church. And this piece of music actually comes from a thousand years ago, the ninth and 10th centuries. So back then, the monks who sang this kind of music, they needed a way to write down the notes and write down the notes so they could give it to other monks to sing in maybe a different place or a different church or maybe at a later time. So they came up with what we have, what we would call dot notation per se. It wasn't the most accurate, but this is what it looked like. You could have this note here and then go higher to show a note that is higher and then go lower to show a note that is lower. So if a chant or a song sounds a little something like this, ah, 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 it could be written like that. But the problem is that it wasn't all that specific as far as notes. Mr. Reese, how would you sing these notes here? Ah, ah, ah. Miss Luke, how would you sing this? See how they were singing really different things? So it wasn't really all that accurate. People could interpret it different ways or understand it different ways. So that's how they came up with lines and spaces. We call these lines and spaces on the staff. Everybody take your hand and put it out in front of you. You can see you have five fingers and in between those fingers you have four spaces. So with that we can remember that on a staff you have five lines and four spaces. I'm gonna write that on the board so we can see it. So we have a line here, oh, oops, Chuck, and a space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line. So we have these five lines and four spaces in between those lines. No matter what instrument you play, you are going to be reading notes on these lines and spaces. So it's important for you to be able to decide whether a note is on a line or a space. Let's practice that really quickly. If I can have my flash. Oh, here they are. I put them right behind me. So is this note on a line or a space? What do you think? Take a second and think about it. So you can see how it's on a line because the line is going right through this note. There's our quarter note, by the way. We talked about this before, just to review. It goes right through the note. So that is on a line. What about this one? This is on a line or a space? It's on a space, see, because it's between these two lines. This one is also on a space, right? Because it's between these two lines. Let's do two more. You can see here it's on a, is it a line or a space? What do you think? It's on a line. See how the line goes right through the note? Let's do one more. Is this on a line or a space? Miss Luke, what do you think? It's on a line! It's on a line, right, because the line goes right through the note. So like I said, no matter what instrument you play, you're going to need to know whether a note is on a line or a space. 